let's get into some Doppler effect practice questions. If you've missed my previous video where I explained Doppler effect, I explained the Doppler effect equation and I did example one, I'd go check that out first if I were you, it's linked down below. But as a brief reminder, this is the Doppler effect equation and this is what all the different variables mean. Remember, either the source or the listener will be stationary. So either VS or VL will be zero. Remember, when you answer a Doppler effect question, you have to write this exact formula, exactly what you see above my head. You have to write that down first with the plus minus, up and down, plus minus, plus minus. When we substitute, we will change that to either a plus or minus, depending on who is moving. And I taught you this diagram that you can use to determine what sign to use in the equation, or you can just memorize which sign based on who is moving like this. So let's take a look at example two. We've got a police car traveling at 30 meters per second towards a stationary observer. So immediately we know that the police car must be the source. The frequency of the sound heard by the listener is 684 hertz. What is the frequency of the police car's siren? Take the speed of sound in air to be 340. So first things first, I'm going to list my variables. They mention that the police car is traveling at 30 meters per second. And we know that the observer, the listener is stationary, which means the velocity or the speed of that listener is zero. The frequency of the sound heard by the listener is 384 hertz. So that is the frequency observed by the listener is 384 hertz. They want to know the frequency of the police car siren, which would be the frequency of the source the frequency of the thing that is making the sound. Take the speed of sound in air to be 340. So speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. As I said, that is generally around that, you know, value, and it's usually given to you. So first things first, you need to always write down the equation as it appears on the formula sheet, exactly as is. So we write it down like that. Then the next thing I need to do is substitute. So, okay, frequency of the listener, frequency observed by the listener, 384. V on the top and the bottom is 340. So we're gonna put a 340 on the top, a 340 on the bottom. Now to figure out whether to put plus or minus in the top in the numerator and denominator, I personally am going to use my little diagram that I taught you in the first lesson. And it looks like this. This is a plus and this is a minus. In this particular question, the police car, the source, is moving towards the listener. So source is moving towards the listener. So we are going to substitute a minus for the source, velocity of the source. So here's velocity of the source. This is going to be a minus. And we know that the source is moving at 30 meters per second. If I put a plus at the bottom, the top Oh, sorry, if I put a minus at the bottom, the top gets a plus and the listener is stationary. So it's zero. And we are looking for the frequency of the source. Now I can get rid of my diagram. I don't need it anymore. I've substituted. And now all I need to do is solve for my unknown, my FS. How do I do that? Well, we are multiplying by this entire fraction. So I need to say 384 divided by this entire fraction. So just type the whole thing out on your calculator and you get 350,12 hertz. And it makes sense, think about it. Here's the police car, it is the source. Okay, I'm just drawing a very ugly little car. It's making a sound. It's traveling towards the listener. Here's the listener. So the, the, the source is going this way. The listener observes a frequency of 384. Okay, because the source is traveling towards the listener, we expect this number to be higher than the frequency emitted by the source, which is 350, 12. So it makes sense that what the listener hears, the frequency observed by the listener is higher. Now I want you to pause the screen and I want you to try this question first by yourself. I love giving this to my learners. It confuses them. It gets them a little bit stuck. I want you to think about how would you solve this question? How would you do it? Think about it. Pause, try. Let's look at what we have. We know that the school bell is the source, okay? The school bell rings with an unknown frequency, so we don't know the frequency of the source. A car drives away from the school and the frequency heard by a passenger in the car is 0.96 times that of the frequency of the bell. So we don't actually know the frequency observed by the listener, but we know that it's 0.96 times that of the frequency of the bell, the frequency of the source. So technically, I don't know what that is either. What is the speed of the car as it drives away? So we're looking for velocity of the listener. Remember, the car is not the source. The car with the person inside, think about the car and the listener as being one. 
Sure, the, the car can't listen, but the listeners inside the car, they move with the same velocity and they will experience the same velocity or frequency of the listener. Okay, so the bell is definitely the source. The source is not moving. So we're looking for this. This is my ultimate goal. The source is not moving. So we know the velocity of the source is zero. And we know, well, I should have told you here, sorry, everybody, that the speed of sound in air is 340. Sorry, that is, it's almost a constant. It's not really a constant, but they should tell you that in your questions. Just like we told you earlier over here, take the speed of sound in air to be 340. Okay, so 340. If you want to try again, knowing that V is 340, go ahead and pause the screen. But if you haven't figured it out yet, I don't know if that's going to necessarily help you. So let me show you. How do you do this? Now, what I say to my learners is take something as X. So it says the school bell rings with an unknown frequency. So the school bell is the source. It rings with an unknown frequency. Let's call it X. A car drives away from the school and the frequency heard by a passenger in the car. So the, the car and the passenger in the car is the listener. It's 0 0.96 times that of the frequency of the bell. So 0 0.96 multiplied by X. It's basically what the listener hears is a percentage, is 96% of what the bell is producing, if that makes sense. 0 0.96 times that. Okay, it's not hearing 100% of what the bell is producing because there's movement. It's hearing 0 0.96 times that. We want to know the speed of the car as it drives away, so the velocity of the listener, and there we go. Now, how do you figure out the signs? As I showed you, my diagram that I use, or you can just memorize it, there's my diagram. In this case, the listener, the car with the listener in it, is driving away from the bell. So here's the listener. It's driving away from the source. Okay, this confuses people when they use my diagram. Well, they're not really. Here's the listener. Put your finger on listener. It's not going towards the source. No, the listener is going away from the source. So you see how I'm pointing that way? I'm pointing in the negative direction. So the listener, where you see VL, that gets a negative. So when I sub in, V is 340. Where you see VL, velocity of the listener, that gets a negative. And I'm looking for the velocity of the listener. Then at the bottom is 340. Because I use the minus at the top, I must use a plus at the bottom. And the source is stationary, so we put a zero. Now, frequency of the source is x, okay? Frequency of the listener is 0, 0,96x. All that you need to do from this point onwards is good maths, good mathematics. Because what happens is, because we have x on both sides of the equation, it's an equation, so I can divide both sides by x. Remember, it's an equation. What I do to the one side, I must do to the other side. So I'm dividing both sides by x. So the x is technically cancel out. So what you have is you have 0, 0,96. Okay, I'm just going to move that there. And on this side, you have 340 minus VL over, what is 340 plus 0? Just 340. And you continue solving from there. So how would you get VL by itself? You say 0, 0,96 multiplied by 340. And I get this number over here. And then I say 326,4 minus 340. And I get negative 13,6 equals negative VL. Therefore, velocity of the listener is 13,60 meters per second away from the bell. Well, they wanted speed, which means I don't need a direction. Just 13,6 meters per second. That's it. I really hope that this practice helped you. In the next video, I will be doing more complicated practice involving something known as simultaneous equations. I'll see you then. Bye, everyone.